Hi, this is Tommy Stevens with K2 Enterprises. Welcome to another in a series of technology tips. In this tip, we are going to focus on how you can manage your Microsoft Windows and your Microsoft Office updates. Now, I recognize that that might seem like a rather mundane topic, but it's a very important topic. Because in today's world of software as a services, of course, one of the challenges we face is knowing which version of an application we happen to be running at any point in time. This is important because the features that are available to us do in fact vary based on the version of a specific application we might be running. For example, if Microsoft issues an update to Microsoft Office, let's assume Excel for example, then I might choose to install that update on my computer or it may be installed for me automatically by my IT staff or through an Office 365 update. However, if I have a team member or a customer or a client who does not install that same update, then we might have incompatibilities between documents that we might need to share. Again, assuming that we're talking about Excel, for instance, suppose Microsoft adds a new feature to Excel, I take advantage of that feature inside a particular workbook, I try to share that workbook with a team member or a customer or a client who does not have that same version of Excel, then that feature will not be available to them and potentially that's going to cause some real productivity issues. Of course, the same thing could be said for Microsoft Windows. If we have a Microsoft Windows update, namely coming down through Windows 10, since Windows 10 now really represents operating system as a service or Windows as a service as it's also known, if there's a great new security feature, for example, that's added to a Windows 10 update, how would I know whether or not that feature is available on my computer? because I really do need to know which version of my operating system or which version of a particular software application I happen to be running. That's the ultimate question here. Now, in fact, it can be very easy to find out what version of an application or operating system you, you are indeed running. For purposes of our conversation today, we're going to focus on Windows 10 and Microsoft Office, but do recognize that similar tools for finding the version exist with virtually all software titles that are out there today. Flipping over to my desktop, as you can see, let's talk about finding that version in Windows 10. Perhaps the easiest way of doing so is just to type a very simple command into the search box. And of course, the search box is located there in the lower left-hand corner. I'm going to simply type the command W-I-N-V-E-R, which as you might guess is really just shorthand for Windows version. Now recognize that this command is not a new feature in Windows 10. In fact, it's been in the Windows operating system for a number of years. When I type WinVer and then say, yes, I do indeed want to run that command, notice that, and I'll just move this dialog box to the middle of our screen, notice that it's printing or, or publishing, I should say, some information about my computer, more specifically some information about Windows 10 installed on my computer. And right there in the middle, we can see that I am running version 1809 of Windows 10. Now, if you're not familiar with how Microsoft handles version numbers, it's a real simple uh, set of shorthand, if you will. Uh, the 18 stands for the last two digits of the year in which that uh, update was published. So, of course, that would be 2018. And the 09 stands for the month number. So, of course, that would be September. And that's somewhat of a universal trait when we're talking about Microsoft. Any Anytime you see a version number, you can assume that the first two digits represent the last two digits of the year and the last two digits of the version number represent the month number. So in this case, again, I know that the version number uh, 1809 equates to September of 2018. Now I could do something else with that version number. If I wanted more details about what was included in that release, I could navigate to the website that I'm showing you now on screen, microsoft.com uh, slash windows slash what's hyphen new. Uh, it's actually not necessary to put the en-us in the middle, but the, that is the complete URL. I can navigate to that website, as we'll do momentarily, and I can find out all kinds of details about what was published in that release of Windows 10. In fact, as you can see, I've now jumped out to that website, and I can see over on the left-hand side all of the more recent versions of Windows 10, and I can click on one of these links, or even actually click the link here in the middle of the page, and find out everything that was new in that particular release of Windows 10. 
This is a great way of staying on top of all of the new features, all of the security updates, et cetera, et cetera, that Microsoft is pushing out uh, in the Windows 10 environment. Some of this information might not be that relevant to, let's say, end users, but all of this information might be, uh, would certainly be relevant, I should say, to those who are just a little bit curious about what's going on inside their version of Windows. Now let's turn our attention over to Microsoft Office. How could we find what version of Microsoft Office we happen to be running? I'm just simply going to minimize, I'm sorry, escape out of the presentation view of that slide. I'm in PowerPoint, but the procedure would be the same if you were in Word or Excel or virtually any of the other Microsoft applications. And that procedure is a very simple one. Just click on the File tab of the ribbon in the upper left-hand corner and then click Account near the lower portion of the strip on the left-hand side. And now what we're going to find is a splash screen, as I like to call it, right in the middle of the page here. And I can see that, indeed, I'm running Microsoft Office 365, but if you were running a different version of Office that is a, a perpetual license, you would see that information here. More importantly for our conversation today, notice right down here toward the bottom, we do in fact have the version number. I am running version 1808, which of course would indicate the August 2018 release of Microsoft Office. Now I should point out before we leave this screen, notice that there is also a build number. Uh, immediately to the right of the version 1808 indicator. And that's important to note because within a given version, there could be multiple, for lack of better term, subversions. And more on that in just one second. For now, let's bounce out and see what we can do now that we know that I'm running version 1808 of, and in this case, uh, of Microsoft Office. Now, just as we had a website for Windows 10 to tell us about all of the updates, we also have a similar website for Microsoft Office. You can see the address for that website currently on, on the screen. As I navigate out to that website, now we can drill in and find out what was new in version 1808. Now, notice, notice that I can do this if I'm running Office 365. I can do it if I'm running Office for the Mac, if I'm running a per perpetual license of Microsoft Office, that is a non-365 license, or even an Office server, um, sorry, Office server product. In this case, since I'm running Office 365, I'll go that way, and I can go in and say, let me see the update history. Now, this update history, that's what we're looking at now in the middle of the screen, showing me the more recent updates to Microsoft Office, more specifically Office 365, and I can scroll, scroll down and get, get even more information about all of the different build numbers. You'll recall I, I highlighted the build for you just a few moments ago. Now, in addition to seeing all of the detailed information about, about the version numbers, the release dates, the build numbers, etc., I can also click on Release Notes and now begin to go in and find out more information about the new features, the security updates, etc., that were added to that particular release. Now, since I happen to be in the semi-annual channel of Office 365, and I know that it was a 2018 update, I'm going to go in and say, let me see all of the um, updates that were made in the uh, 1808 version, the different build numbers underneath that. But I'll scroll down, actually, because I know that that 1808 version was released on September the 11th. And now what I can find are all of the feature updates and the security updates that were published in that edition of Microsoft Office. So, for example, if I'm an Excel jump and I need to know all of the new features uh, that Microsoft added to that release, here you can see I'm able to go in and find that information rather easily on the Microsoft website. There's no mistaking it, folks. The genie is out of the bottle with software as a service and the continual update cycles that are brought about through software as a service. It's here to stay. It's not going away. Therefore, we need to understand how to manage these updates so that our software works the way that we want it to, the way that we need it to. Of course, one way of doing this is by understanding the features that are available within a specific version of an application, such as Windows 10 or Microsoft Office. This information, of course, is going to help you make more informed decisions about your Windows updates and your Office updates and how to take advantage of the new features that are out there. As I hope you learned in the demonstration, this is a painless process, just takes knowing a couple of little shortcuts. Therefore, I encourage you to take advantage of the information that we provided today to learn more about the features that you have available to you in your instances of Windows 10 and or Microsoft Office. 
Thanks for stopping by. You can find more information about K2 Enterprises and the training courses that we offer at www.k2e.com.